Hello folks, Russ Scala here with Scala Precision Health. I'm here with Chrissy Misfit, my uh, super advanced question and answer person and also one of our head writers and marketing people. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk about sarcopenia, muscle wasting. And um, we want you to share this video and get the word out because you're, the doctors are really not familiar with this yet. So we're looking at muscle wasting in the elderly starting at 50 and on up. Uh, sarcopenia is considered muscle wasting. This was sarcopenia was considered a disease in uh, the year 2000. Currently, right now, the aging population really has no treatment protocols available for sarcopenia and muscle wasting. So, there's a perfect storm here. There's about three epiphanies I had in my life that led me to develop this. Uh, one was when uh, I was a paramedic and I used to take people into nursing homes. Um, I remember uh, I would have to go into their home and pick them up and, they, you know, they're 85, 90 pounds, skin over bone. I would move them over to my stretcher. And, and these people were so thin. And I always remembered they, they didn't have, most of the people that I, I transferred in there didn't have any, any, any muscle at all. So that always stayed with me. Fast forward another 10 years, I became a triathlete. I was racing all over the country. I started testing triathletes and bodybuilders. And I always wondered, why are these older bodybuilders hanging on a muscle mass? Uh, after a long distance triathlon, I would go back uh, to the finish line and watch the elderly people, the 60, 70, 80 year old age groups cross the finish line and notice they, they, they were very well muscled. Um, fast forward another 20 years, I became director of research for pharmacy and we started opening anti-aging centers from Boca Raton to Beverly Hills. And here was the real deal. I started seeing people in their 70s, 80s, and 90s still maintaining muscle mass with the nutritional and hormone replacement therapy. So I've been researching this and asking questions for about, um, about 30 years, folks. So what I want to do with you today, I want to paint a picture. I don't want to get too complicated. I want you to understand what we have here at Scala Precision Health that could help you or a family member. The doctors out there, we could incorporate this into your clinic. Uh, for the assisted living centers, we could develop this inside your assisted living center so, so your clients and patients can stay with assisted living and not move into a nursing home. So let's, uh, let's move over to some questions and see uh, if we can educate you folks, okay? Chrissy. All right. Well, first, let's start with sarcopenia. That's a big word. Yeah. And uh, what is it? We said it, already said it was muscle wasting, so we know that. But uh, how does that happen? Why do people get sarcopenia? Well, I think, and, and what, yeah, what, what happens is as we age, you see our intestinal tract here? We don't, we don't pull nutrients out of food. So our intestinal tract uh, gets out of balance. So you are not what you eat, you are what you absorb. So you could eat all the protein in the world and all the carbohydrates, but if you're not absorbing it out of your intestinal tract, um, you're going to start mining nutrients from your own muscle tissue. So people will start to lose muscle mass in their 30s. So uh, we got to think about that. You are not what you eat, you already absorb. And, and again, remember that the doctors really don't, really don't know how to treat this. So, so the fact that your, your intestines aren't absorbing nutrients out of your food, or even if you are taking supplements, it's not absorbing that either, um, leads your body to steal the nutrients it needs out of your muscles and your bones, and your brain, and your right. heart, right? And that creates the sarcopenia. Right. Every day we need about 13, about uh, 20 minerals, 13 vitamins, 9 amino acids, 2 essential fats, a little bit of sunlight. If we don't get that, if we don't pull that out of our own food, we're going to mine it from our muscle, bone, and brain tissue. And that's, and that's what we're trying to avoid. So like I said, sarcopenia or muscle wasting was considered a disease in the year 2000. Here we are in 2022. And if you were to take your mom into the doctor's office and you wanted to help her maintain her muscle mass, there's no treatment protocol. So this is, this is why we're developing this. Um, so, so you said you can start losing muscle at age 30? Yeah, right, right around 30, women and men start, start losing testosterone, growth hormone, and progesterone. Again, everybody's biochemically unique. Uh, stress, elevated cortisol, shuts off growth hormone, IGF-1. It impacts skin, bone, heart, brain. So chronic stress actually suppresses you know, all, all, all your hormonal levels. Oh, nobody has any chronic stress these days. So, all right. 
Um, I, I know you like the outliers. You just, you just mentioned that you worked, you were, you uh, ran triath, uh, triathlons, um, uh, marathons, and, um, you work with bodybuilders. So tell us a little bit about your work with bodybuilders and how you connected the dots with sarcopenia. Yeah. Well, one of the things about bodybuilders, they, they use a lot of, uh, anabolic steroids and what we can learn from bodybuilders is they maintain high volumes of muscle. And um, a lot of the research out there right now, the doctors really are not, and the, and, the, and the PhDs in physiology are trying to figure out ways to study the elderly people to maintain muscle mass. Well, I say, let's study the bodybuilders. Let's study the AIDS patients. Let's study the anorexic patients and, and look at what's happening to them on a cellular level. And then we can move that over to the elderly. For instance, no, n nobody in nobody over sixty is getting their intestinal tract checked. So why you know why don't we start there? Why don't we balance out the gut, help them pull no, more nutrients out of food? You know why don't we understand that certain protein, like people over sixty, they could absorb protein at different parts of the day that are fat that faster than if if, if they were to eat at night. So we know that fasting, ex, you know, accentuates or, or, or causes longevity. You know what I mean? So muscle is a longevity organ. And we were going back and forth on whether it's an organ or not. But, um, yeah, muscle is considered a longevity organ. We have to maintain it, you know, as we age. And the treatment protocols that we developed at Scala Precision Health will, will, will be able to help folks may maintain their muscle mass. But you don't need to be a bodybuilder muscle mass. No, no, too much. That's, that's too much. That, that much muscle actually accelerates the aging process. I love the bodybuilders because they share. They were so open with me in sharing information. Um, eating six meals a day, 10,000 calories, elevates blood glucose and insulin. I actually did a, a, a show with Dorian Yates, six-time Mr. Olympia, and we were studying why the bodybuilders, so many pro bodybuilders were having heart attacks and dying. And um, it gets back to the, the maintaining that high amount of muscle mass, damaging the lining of the arteries. So we, we really drill down on that. Again, we want to maintain the right amount of muscle mass. Uh, Brian's going to show a video right now um, of, uh, of two, 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 two or three or four women. I think it's a race. And, and folks, what I want you to do is clean the chalkboard in your head. Everything that you've thought about elderly people, clean it from your head. Because watch this video. It's very instrumental. It's very short, but these women are all over 100, and they're running a 100-yard dash. Oh <laughs> I'm just saying. Isn't that inspirational? That's going to be me, yeah. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> that, 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 because what, what, what I want you to understand is when I think about when people say, Russ, I want to do exercise, what's going you know, to help me age properly? And I say, just start walking. Start walking and do a little bit of jogging. That helps your heart. That helps your muscle. That helps your mitochondria on a, on a cellular level. So let's let let's let's run this video real quick. Okay, so let's talk. You just talked about um, women 100, 100 years old running a 100 yard dash. Right. How do they get there? Well, um, compare and contrast that to your, your days as a paramedic escorting elderly to the assisted living versus what you saw in the anti aging center years later. Well, one of the things, our need for affiliation, when you have a good tribe, when you have good people around you and you work out, possibilities are endless. So these women that were on a track team, they worked out as a group together. They, they probably never even considered running a 100-yard dash or running in a race like this. 
But they put the heads together. They started maybe running 30 yards and maybe running 50 yards. But as a team, they kept training. Some of them may, may have been ex-athletes. But the point of the matter is running, running and maintaining your heart function, that, that's what we want to do. We want to stay mobile. A lot of people are not mobile once they get, you know, once they get to a certain age. They're watching TV in their nursing yeah, home. Yeah, yeah, they become less mobile. So I'm not saying everybody needs to run a marathon or needs to run a 100-yard dash. But if these women were 100 years old and, and you just watched them cross the finish line, they were mobile. They have to train together. Their heart is working great. Their digestion is working great. And they're hanging on to muscle. That, that's super important. Um, the other outliers that you like to talk about um, is uh, people in the space program because those circumstances um, are, lend themselves to muscle wasting and bone loss. So tell us a little bit about uh, when you read uh, the, the book that, uh, that uh, Mr. Kelly wrote. Yeah, Scott Kelly was an astronaut. He had a twin brother. Scott Kelly was the first person to spend a year in space. Um, his book started out with he was, he was home for about a week and he had really bad inflammation. He was trying to walk from the bathroom to the uh, uh, to his dinner table. And we've ne we've never before treated anybody in space. So I started drilling down not only on the book that I read about Scott Kelly, but also on the treatment protocols. So people that spend a lot of time in the hospital, they have muscle wasting. People that are AIDS patients have muscle wasting. Anorexics have muscle wasting. All right, people that starve themselves in concentration clamps went, went through muscle wasting. So there's a lot of other areas that we could study that we could sort of take over to the Scott Kelly paradigm when, when he was in space. So if he was in space for a year, my question is, why don't they measure his testosterone levels? Why don't they help him maintain muscle mass with check his intestinal tract? So there's a lot of, and again, not shooting anybody down, but there's a lot of stuff NASA isn't doing. So that's why companies come along like SpaceX and they do more advanced treatment protocols, they, it seems like once you become a bureaucracy, you, you get tunnel vision. Everything's got to be done the same way. We need innovation. And we can study muscle mass and muscle wasting in so many different groups and then just apply it to the NASA program. Well, and you can relate, you know, to the everyday person. You're talking about tunnel vision. That's your specialist, your cardiologist and your you know, uh, rheumatologist and your pe uh, podiatrist, whatever, like they all have tunnel vision for their specialty and not necessarily in your muscles kind of cover your whole body. It's not just one <laughs> part of your body, not one area of specialization. Um, and let's not forget your heart is a very important muscle, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, your, your heart has testosterone receptors on it. So if you got somebody with heart disease or somebody with uh, a congestive heart failure, this information we want to put in people's hands. And folks, what we're talking about muscle wasting today, you, you'd be able to ask your general practitioner um, tougher questions so we can start ordering the blood work you need to get ahead of this, okay? Because we're all going to lose muscle. Um, you know, it's about quality of life as we age. And I've seen people in their 80s, in their 90s, that, that have just amount of muscle mass. They're still riding their bikes around Europe and, you know, and they're healthy. Living past 150 is going to be right in our hands, folks, pretty soon. Um, and we know that the, for example, the, the nursing homes, like the diet there is terrible, right? It's right, right. Just, high carb, low right. protein, low right. nutrition. Right. Um, does that lead people to be, uh, to, to have what the term is uh, sarcopenia obesity? Is that what? Well, one of, the, one of the things we know is the food pyramid is... Uh, like 13 bread groups on the bottom. All nutritionalists that work for these nursing homes and assisted living centers still teach the food pyramid, where we know as we age, an elderly person needs more protein, all right? And, and it just, again, as crazy as it sounds, we are all biochemically unique, but there are some sweeping generalizations. As you get older, you need more protein. All right. As you get older, you need more essential fatty acids. So what we did at Scala Precision Health, we have a diet. We have protein and amino acids. We have supplements. Remember, you're not what you eat. You already absorb. So we think of that when we're taking care of an elderly patient. So we went down to Boca Raton and we were going to set up a muscle wasting program in a facility. And we talked to the owners and uh, Tony and I went down there and we sh they showed us our business plan. They wanted us to build a room to do all this advanced testing. And, th and that's what it was about 
we, we, we were going to use uh, muscle waste. We were going to prevent muscle wasting. The only thing different is they were going to use those suits that had the electrical muscle stimulation. Mm -hmm. They would use muscle electrical stimulation while they were working out with light weight to stimulate the muscle to, to grow a little more, which is another, another whole video. So your program includes looking at the microbiome, like looking at the gut. There's right. testing for that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, testing the uh, hormone levels, right. testing the uh, nutrient levels. Exactly. Anything else? What else? Well, we got a lab and a pharmacy that work with us. So whether we're developing an a assisted living center or we're opening a freestanding clinic or we're just working one-on-one -on -one with the elderly, um, we want to look at vitamins, minerals, amino acids. We want to look at testosterone, estrogen, progesterone thyroid T3 and T4, the microbiome, and also we want to measure the mitochondria, you know, on a cellular level. So that, that, that's sort of the 60,000 foot view of the program that we're talking about. So sarcopenia, folks, is a big word, um, but it's about muscle wasting. You want to do the right amount of exercise just to maintain your muscle mass. You don't need to spend hours in the gym, but the multifactorial program that we developed that looks at diet, nutrition, hormone replacement, the gut, the microbiome, and mitochondrial function, that's the package that we're probably 10 years ahead of traditional medicine with. Okay. Um, is there anything we didn't cover yet? No, no, we're good. We're good. I like that right here. I think we, we educated some people. Folks, <laughs> share this information with your, with your loved ones and your family and um, uh, hit the notification bell and uh, we'll be back with some more research. Okay? Thank you. The time is now for you to take control of your health. Everybody and everybody has a story. Let us find out yours today.